morning, everyone. Uh, this uh, was sprung on me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be speaking. But uh, having heard uh, what's been said today, I think that the big question really is who is curating the culture? And um, everything that has been expressed this morning shows evidence that uh, primarily who's create, curating culture predominantly are white, middle-class men. And um, in movies, which is primarily what I do, basically I, I am of the belief that we go to the movies to see ourselves. And the, the best movies you or I have ever seen is where we are able to project ourselves onto the protagonist and wonder, what would I do? How would that affect me? How would I get through that situation? Well, what we predominantly have, in movies especially, are younger, better-looking versions of the people curating culture. And that's just, it's, it's just, it's just the reality uh, of it. Um, you know, for me personally, as someone who was born in the UK, uh, loves the UK, uh, feels very much British, um, I felt pushed out of the UK. Um, because of the glass ceiling I could feel my head bobbing against, having been given very genuine and real opportunities. I went to the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts, and while I was at drama school, I remember um, at the time watching TV uh, in the UK and thinking there were very few examples of actors who look like me, who I aspired to be like, uh, aspired to have their careers. In order to have those feelings, I had to look to the States. I made a very clear decision while at drama school that what I had to do um, in order to succeed was to not, to actively not take the roles that were black roles, um, because they were caricatures, stereotypical, and they were always on the periphery. So I remember going to meet agents um, uh, as I was graduating from drama school and saying, I want to go up for the roles for white actors. And I kid you not, I was laughed at severally uh, by agents um, who just said, that's stupid, you know, we're, they're, not, they're just not going to do that. I eventually found an agent who, um, who was able to understand what I was trying to do, and um, soon afterwards I was cast as, as the King of England for the Royal Shakespeare Company. Get in! <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the beginning of, uh, of proving to myself and to the world in general that it is not crazy and it is doable. Um, Soon after that was a role that was not race-specific in Spooks, um, which did incredible things for my career. But soon after that, I could see that actors, my peers, um, the, those who had a, a similar trajectory to me, were going on to do movies, were going on to play leads. We all love a period drama here, and they weren't about to put me in any of those. Um, so I started to feel that I was going to start going round in circles. Nice TV, back to the theatre, nice TV. But I wasn't going to be James McAvoy, I wasn't going to be Benedict Cumberbatch. I wasn't going to be those guys who I grew up doing theatre with and being at drama school with. Um, and then I, uh, I did a film called The Last King of Scotland. And Spooks uh, did well in America, and I went out there, um, primarily just to, just to do marketing for Spooks. And I walked around L.A., and I saw black people on magazine covers. I saw black people in commercials. I saw black people on billboards. I saw black people integrated into that society in a way that I didn't see here. And I started to get uncomfortable with where... I lived. I felt like I was planting my seed in unfertile ground. And that's why in 2007 I moved. 
When I moved, something very curious happened. As I started to gain a degree of success in America, suddenly opportunities that I wasn't being afforded in the UK <laughs> suddenly started coming in. And I thought, wow, I have to leave and have success elsewhere in order for what I have by way of ability to be validated. Um, you know, I've always believed as a black person, unfortunately, you have to work twice as hard to get half as far. That means I have to work four times as hard as Benedict, who's a very good friend of mine. <laughs> um, and, and he's a hard worker and a talented actor. But, um, but, but the truth of the matter is I don't mind that because I, I actually think, you know, your best work comes out of hard work. But... Not everyone can move to the States. Not everyone should move to the States. In fact, I would say no one who enjoys being British, enjoys living in this country, wants to work here, is proud of the talent pool we have here, should think that way. I have, every year, during pilot season, a raft of black and Asian actors coming through my home who are not only frustrated not only to feel pushed out in the way that I felt, but they are desperate. Things are worse now than they were when I was doing Spooks, when I was playing Henry Bissett. They, they just literally are. Um, the opportunities that I was afforded are not, are not there. And having played Dr. King in, in Selma or, or any of the other films I'm doing, I just know that those opportunities are not on offer here. Um, I literally am on a plane today to go and do a film called A United Kingdom, which um, is about the uh, king of Botswana who married an English lady in the 40s, uh, just after the Second World War, and their interracial marriage caused quite a storm between South Africa, Botswana, and the UK. Uh, it's a beautiful story. It's an epic period love story, uh, Rosamund Pike is playing my wife, Amma Asante, who directed Bell, is going to be directing it. Um, that film would not be happening if I was still here. That film, I've been trying to get it made for five years, and what broke the deadlock is Selma, which is an American film about an American protagonist, which happened because there was an American advocate for it, Oprah Winfrey. That film doesn't happen without her as someone who is a decision maker, a curator of culture, <coughs> being there to say, I want to see myself on film. I just did a film called The Queen of Cartway for Disney. Uh, it's a beautiful story about a chess prodigy, nine-year-old chess <coughs> prodigy who's found in the slums of Uganda. I play her coach, and she goes on to be a champion. True story. Myself and Lupita <coughs> Nyong'o are in that film. Lupita plays her mother. I play her coach. A lot of the film is about the friction between us and how this girl can go on to transcend her environment in order to succeed. A classic triumph of the will story being made by Disney. All black actors, entirely African cast and directed by Mira Nair. Um, Tendo Nagenda is an uh, executive at Disney. He is of Ugandan parentage. That's why that film is getting made. Until we have a situation whereby here in Britain there are curators of culture who are reflective of what Britain actually is, especially in our cities, Nothing is going to change, because at the end of the day, we all have prejudices. We all um, have allegiances that are both conscious and subconscious. And so, therefore, we are, we are kidding ourselves to purely rely on people who are already in positions of power to change, to suddenly change their nature, to suddenly change their, their point of view, their worldview, and what it is they want to see. At the end of the day, whether we like it or not, we take care of our own. And what you have to do, what we have to do, is change the demographic, change the landscape, change the faces, the genders, um, the people 
who are in those positions of power to green light projects. Uh, I have been a beneficiary of that. Other people have believed in me. Other people like Oprah Winfrey, like Tendon Aganda have come along and greenlit things that I'm now able to do. I essentially was fundamental in greenlighting a United Kingdom that I'm about to go and do because I want to see myself in movies. I am married to a white woman. I, I am, I've been married for 17 years. I'm deeply in love with her. And I want to see that story in film. And so we're telling that intimate love story on an epic background, which is what we all want to see. And so, as someone who has now been afforded the opportunity to curate culture, I'm here to tell you here in the, in, in the UK that I don't <coughs> want my children, I don't want uh, my friend's children to have to... I literally was at an event yesterday, and the first thing this young actress said to me is, how do I get to the States? And I just... <laughs> It just, it just killed me because I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I know I had to do it, but I don't want you to feel like you had to do it. So, you know, um, basically all of this is only going to work if the faces and the genders of the leaders, the people in power, change. And we have all just got to push for that in order for anything meaningful to happen. That's my opinion. Thank you for listening.